Hey folks, Jake Schneider here with Life as an Outsider. I'm here with Wade Thompson of Captain Roy's. We're going to talk about being in the Des Moines area, how Captain Roy's started as a food truck, and how it became what it is today as a live music venue and bar. Stick around. Hey folks, Jake Schneider here from Life as an Outsider. I'm here in a beautiful spot in Des Moines today with my guest, Wade Thompson, one of the owners and partners of Captain Roy's. Wade, how are you doing today, man? Doing good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It is an absolute pleasure and honor to have you. I am more than happy to feature anybody from the Des Moines music scene, the Des Moines restaurant scene, bar scene, whatever you want to call it. This is a real treat. It's a beautiful day, too. It is beautiful. Finally. Thank goodness. Seriously, we were getting snow on St. Patrick's Day, and I'm like, I don't think we're going to go right into summer, but ended up being a perfect spring day. So tell me a little bit. Captain Roy's, as we can see in the background, used mm-hmm. to be a big orange bus. Yep. Tell me a little bit about how that came well, about. It still is a big orange bus. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, actually, you know, uh, had the idea of opening a place here. Um, my partner, Jack Doherty, uh, who I met through my parents, approached me and uh, um, said that, uh, you know, he thought that this would be a great venue to have a bar and and restaurant and live music venue and it's right here on the neil smith bike trail which uh when we moved in here um i think the traffic count was at about a half a million bikes a year coming by here and and, uh there was really no commerce in the neighborhood here no place for people to stop and get a drink a refreshment Mm -hmm. um and enjoy the des moines river um and personally i'm a cyclist um been riding bikes forever but uh uh been commuting this trail back and forth uh to work before this became my work and uh um and had ridden by this place i don't know a thousand times Mm -hmm. and thought the same thing that it's it's too bad that they're not using this space for some place where people can gather and and kind of have uh, more of a community center vibe here where you know the people from the neighborhood will have a nice place to hang out um and also to uh cater to the cycling scene and i also have a background in the music industry so um the cycling is close to my heart uh the music is close to my heart um and uh and uh do something nice for the community here and turn this into uh more of an attraction uh for the neighborhood Hmm. um we started out uh in in that bus (laughs) and um the reason that we uh started out in the food truck was because we are in a floodplain here and Hmm. so um anything that we had that we wanted to add to the property had to be mobile um so we started looking for a food truck and and you know we we hadn't really um planned on getting into the food business but people eat <laughs> i eat and uh and also it was a way of you know giving some, uh the, the the people to come here um an option to stay here and have food while they have a beer or or whatever mm-hmm. you you enjoy for a refreshment um found that bus in Miami and uh Five of us uh, flew down there and got a rental car, and we bought the bus, and we got in the bus and followed it, drove it back from Miami. Had a chase car for a while to make sure um, it wasn't going to break down, Mm -hmm. and after about 200 miles, got rid of that, and all five of us got in that bus with lawn chairs and and (laughs) drove it back back here. It took, took about six days, but... 
we stopped and saw a lot of friends on the way. So there you go. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Where did the name Captain Royce come from? Uh, From Anson Roy Williams is his name. Captain Roy is what we call him affectionately. He's the commodore of the marina if you will mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> and he's a he's a river rat and uh, a, a beer drinker and a barefoot skier and uh, you know he's the kind of guy that'll come by here on the 4th of July skiing barefoot with the american flag in one hand and a beer in the other <laughs> i um, love it and so we thought uh, it would be a nice tip of the hat to to anson to captain roy and we asked him can we name the place after you and he was like oh okay i suppose sure and uh, he still hangs out down here, and and uh, that's where the name came from. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, it's really cool talking about being a river at uh, about two years ago, I went on a canoe trip down the Mississippi with some friends, nice. and we weren't able to get over the lock and dam in time. We are like, all right, well, we have no idea what we're going to do. And yeah. so we're on the Mississippi, and if you've been on the Mississippi, there's not a whole lot, like, in terms of towns, whoops, in terms of towns um, along the way. Well, we stop... Mm-hmm. We go under this bridge, and it was like this tiny little town called Hoochieville is yeah. what they called it. <laughs> Their bar was Hoochie's 2. It wasn't the first nice. one. It was Hoochie's 2. Nice. And we, uh, I love telling this story. We got this guy. His name's Tom Tom. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm so nice. They named me twice. <laughs> so he's like, just load your canoes up in the back of my truck, and I'll mm-hmm. drive you over the lock and dam and drop you off. Nice. And there's something about being part of that river rat community and yeah. uh, that, that river friendliness. And yeah. it, it cracked me up because he <laughs> had a... Bud Light in one hand and a bush light in between his legs yeah. while he's driving us across the lock and dam. Sure. I was like, you wouldn't see this in the middle of <laughs> right. Des Moines. but Not in the middle of town. Yeah, it, It's a beautiful spot down here, and you talked a little bit about be- it being a floodplain. And Before the show, we were also talking about it's also a city park as well. So yeah. what were some of the obstacles that you had to overcome with that? Well, just uh, to be able to do construction in a floodplain um, is, is a hurdle. Mm-hmm. Um, we have great partners in the city, city council, uh, Des Moines Parks and Rec. Uh, uh, we worked with the DNR, we worked with the Army Corps, and we also worked with the county, county supervisor, who at that time was Tom Hawkinsmith. Uh, and they they were all uh, champions of our idea. They they saw our vision, and uh, and actually there are ways that that you know in the codes or whatever i won't bore you with all the 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 boring details of it but there is things that you can do to buildings it's called wet flood proofing um and when we rebuilt this this shed essentially um you know we had to pour footings down into the ground everything is concrete and steel inside and everything is mobile so um you know the insulation in the walls is vapor locked so we're prepared for a flood. If it floods, we take all the expensive stuff out and go up the hill. And when it's gone, we come back with bleach and pressure washers. <laughs> uh, but it, it, you know, it, it took some time to get done. But as I said, we've got great partners in the city here, and uh, they were all champions of our idea. And uh, and uh, I believe that that we have achieved the vision that uh that we proposed to them to begin with hmm. so uh um we've got some tokens in the trust bucket <laughs> hey there you go <laughs> i love to hear that yeah you know one thing i want to ask you is this place is such a you know in the past five years since the building has been here it's gotten to be known as a place for live music and as we're looking around i mean you're seeing it in the video there's bikers pulling up, and not motorcyclists, but bicyclists who mm-hmm. are coming up. What is it that drives your passion behind bicycling, the bicycling community? Because I've realized working at a sporting goods store where we service bicycles, it's a huge community. It what would you huge. say about the uh, Des Moines bike, bicycling community? I'd in your... say it's the best cycling community in the world, hmm. is what I would say. And I've traveled all over the world um, and ridden bikes all over the world. Uh, and um, it's the the nice thing about the cycling community in Des Moines is is that it doesn't matter what level that you ride at or or if it's not even a level, 
uh, what culture you embrace when it comes to cycling, whether you're a bagger or uh, you like to ride BMX bikes or, or if you're a roadie or, you know, I'm more of a dirt biker. I like to race gravel bikes. I like to race cyclocross and I like to race mountain bikes. And there is uh, a community for all of that here and all of it is welcoming. Um, we just want people to get on bicycles and turn pedals because um, it's uh, it's done nothing but enhance my life and uh, um, it's kept me fit. I'm coming up on the double nickels and and uh, <laughs> and uh, it's just uh, nothing like a good bike ride to to help you sleep well at night. Hmm. So um, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say about it i love it i love cycling um like i said i used to come you know commute by here and uh um thought gosh this would be a great place to uh for a little oasis and it's you know in the middle it's kind of in the middle of everything you can head north here on the trail and go to beaverdale you can go up to sailorville you can ride to ankeny and you can head south and go clear down to the coming tap if you want hmm. to. And and uh, and uh, Des Moines has been great at building connectors. Um, the inner urban trail systems around here are great. It's it's great for commuting, um, and that's uh, what I was doing. I was commuting by bike, and you know I I usually put more miles on a bike than in my car in a year, <laughs> and uh, and I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. There, there are many of us here, and it, uh, you can ride bikes when you're a kid, and you can ride bikes when you get old, like me. Mm -hmm. So, well, and you've definitely succeeded in making this a destination along the way for a lot of bikers. Like you were saying, it's kind of in the middle of everything, you know, from Sailorville all the way up north down to the Coming Tap. And so, mm -hmm. when we were talking about having a spot, starting out as a food truck, it had to be mobile, and then eventually you were able to serve wine and beer and cans but you weren't able to have people inside right. when was it that you were able to renovate the shed bring people in it's been about five years now um, when we were actually able to get people into the building um, we started out like i said in the food truck just serving food then we were able to sell beer out of the truck then it got to a point where we could inhabit the building and we could use the patio um, to entertain people because we've got a wonderful patio down here and it, you know it's the only place literally that you can sit on the river mm -hmm. in des moines and have a beer um or well i'm not going to say it you could jump off our deck into the river <laughs> i don't advise it right right <laughs> um so yeah um what was the question <laughs> that's a great question i don't remember we were so busy talking about just that yeah. sense of community and uh yeah you said the building's been here about five years. Yep. Okay. In yep. that, in that growth, what are some ways that Captain Royce has grown from just being a place where people can come in and get beer, right. come in and get a glass of wine, hang out on their bikes? So how has it grown? So our, uh, you know, our food program has grown. Our menu has expanded. Um, you know, and all of our food is good. Um, it's basic bar food. Um, we are getting ready to do a menu change. Um, and it's all good. We've test, done the test kitchen on all of it. My son is actually my head chef here, <laughs> if you will. He's the kitchen manager. And then my other son, Lucas, is my GM. And he runs the, the, the bar for me. He does the day-to-day -day stuff, the staffing and the, and the ordering and just all the... The stuff I don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to host. Hey, there you, know? you go. <laughs> you know. So... I did not know that, that you, both your sons were involved. Were they involved from the very beginning, or did they just um, get involved in the past couple Lucas years? Lucas has been here for probably five or six years, um, and we, you know, we just kind of brought him up, taught him how to do everything from, you know, like I said, ordering beer to accounting. And, uh, and he's a smart kid, and he took to it. And, uh, and then my other son, Jacob, um, spent several years in the kitchen at Hy-Vee 
you know, in high school, and and he's he loves to cook, and uh, thank God because I don't, <laughs> and he's good at it, and uh, so he took over the kitchen and um, learned how to run, you know, to manage a kitchen and how to control food costs and how to order enough food to feed the humans in a week and mm-hmm. and all of that, and he was actually down in Nashville, uh, working for Dolly Parton and uh covid hit and so he moved back so he's been back here and running food for me for gosh it's probably been almost three years now so oh wow yeah i that's one of the best things that i've noticed in the des moines area i don't know if it's just because us midwesterners are so family driven but there's so many family businesses that i've noticed Mm -hmm. where people are employing their kids or i remember talking to murphy quint from cedar ridge Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a family distillery yeah and what are some of the challenges that you've had to face with having your sons as employees of yours? <laughs> well, it's because they don't, they think that I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's pretty simple, mm-hmm. you know? Um, now it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a thing. Family business is a thing. And, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, um, it's, it's pretty awesome that I get to, uh, that I get to work with my boys down here. Um, you know, and, you know, we can argue and, and fight about whatever but uh you know it's just uh it's actually made our relationship better Hmm. i believe and and you know i haven't managed to run them off yet there you you go i haven't so (laughs) perk i would assume yeah and and i'm 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 happy they're here because i'm not sure anybody else would put up with me (laughs) (laughs) Well, as Captain Royce has grown, um, talking about opening up the kitchen, what about the addition of live music? You mentioned that you kind of came from a music background or mm-hmm. had music in your blood. What is it that makes Captain Royce such a great venue for music? Because I've seen music here, even during the winter when it was cold as heck outside. Yeah. I came and saw um, my older brother and James Bean play, yeah. and they were fantastic. And yeah. I've noticed that... It has such a unique atmosphere here for musicians. And do you think that comes from you having the heart of a musician as well? That you're like, well, I think that's part of it. But also, um, I mean, I attribute it to the people that play music here. And, uh, you know, um, everybody, everyone that plays here is talented and they care about music. And uh, I think it shows. And the people that come to see them, are 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 they're passionate about music and uh and um it was something that was important to me it's always been important to me my grandfather was a a horn player anything with a wood reed traveled all over the world in the navy band and then played jazz with stan kenton and lena Mm -hmm. horn and and uh, uh my father was in bands growing up uh taught me how to play bass in seventh grade you know um and both of my children are musicians as well jake's a drummer and lucas is they're both fantastic musicians um uh lucas actually lessened with james oh wow for a while and and just all all the the cool cats in town man you know um and it's it's important to me and you know you get you get that kind of talent down here and that kind of uh passion for music and uh it's just uh it's you can't deny it Hmm. and you know in the summertime we have music outside down here on the the pontoon stage i call it but uh um it's like a festival down here every friday and saturday it's a wonderful place to to sit outside in the lawn chair and and grab a burger and a beer and and uh and and be on the river and 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 listen to some of your favorite uh local artists Hmm. so um it was really a no-brainer and des moines has so much talent where that is concerned it's as good as any place in the world as far as i'm concerned my favorite bass player i'm a bassist my favorite bass players in the world live right here in des moines john locker and scott sutherland and you know they both played down here and and uh you know it's just a a community thing Hmm. so absolutely and i think that 
with us losing some great music venues, like we lost Vaudeville Muse a couple yep. years ago, and gas lamps closing, gas lamps closing down. Yep. And, you know, thank you to Sam for redoing the Valair Ballroom. Yeah, and we got places like XBK and it. Yep. But I think really that cool. I think that we need more music places like that. You know, yep. Places where you don't feel like you have to pay an obscene cover charge just right. to get in the door and see some local musicians. Yep. And I I applaud you for continuing that tradition of supporting local music and as i'm talking to you just supporting local in general that community aspect is something that has been drilled into my life and it seems like it's something that is drilled into your life as well just support your community wherever you are whatever you do absolutely and i mean even if you go look at my beer selection here you know why would i carry something from minnesota when we've got beer here that is usually better Mm mm-hmm than some other state and and a lot of it is brewed right here in town and uh you know i buy it directly from them you know obviously i have distributors that i buy from also but you know we you know uh you know confluence exile big grove uh you know toppling goliath which is an iowa-based company Mm -hmm. um uh fire trucker uh the list goes on and on and there's really no reason to 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 go outside of our community for for the best beer in the world Hmm. i i I was in the military i you know i i i grew up basically in germany in the air force and i know what good beer is Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know and we got it right here absolutely i couldn't agree more in fact one of my favorite beers of all time is an Iowa beer named after an Iowa band, uh, Iowa Brewing Company's Surf Zombies. It's the a, Surf Zombies. Oh, it's my yeah. favorite IPA I, of all time. It's delicious. It's fantastic. And I usually try and get some in here when they're playing here. Good. Now I know if they're playing here, I'll be down here to. They, they just played here recently, <laughs> and they're they're on the they're on the schedule again for this summer. They'll be outside. So. Awesome. I'm gonna not. I, I might deplete your. Okay. Listen, supply of surf zombies. We'll <laughs> see. I, that's I'll one see what them. I can do. <laughs> uh, if you've been down in the Birdland area, you know that there's quite a bit of construction going on down yep. here. How is that going to affect your company going into the summer? It, I mean, we've been dealing with it since we opened, and and I think uh, the, the main thing is is that we just keep doing what we do down here, and people will find us. Hmm. Um, you know, sometimes portions of the bike trail will be open, but they've got detours, and, and a lot of people like me don't pay a lot of attention to that. We just, I know where I'm going on my bike, and I'm going to get there mm-hmm. type of mentality. <laughs> um so, um, you know, at the worst, it might affect my parking lot, like you see over there. Um, but, uh, um, you know, and, you know, we get about, I don't know, somewhere around 6,000 or 6,500 cars a day by here hmm. on Penn Avenue or Sailor Road is our address. But uh, um, sometimes they'll close Penn Avenue, but people people seem to make their way here anyhow. Um, and the guys, gals that are doing construction in the area come here and eat lunch there you go great man (laughs) yeah (laughs) doesn't sound like you're losing anything that way no not really i mean yeah i wish it was all done but i also i i like to think that maybe we had something to do with spurring the growth in the area um uh and you know getting people to look at the river as an asset not a liability Hmm. and you know we do kayaks out of here in the summer um uh, you know, and you know, the, the marina is full. You know, there's a list to get into this marina. Oh wow! Um, it's probably about 80 people deep now. Hmm. So uh, people are. It's it's a, a, a revitalization of the area, I believe. And uh, and you know, we're getting uh, you know younger families to move into the neighborhood, and and uh, and that's what we that's what we want. We want we want a vibrant community down here and and uh, activity and and uh, I like I said before I, this is more I could, I know it's a bar but it's more of a community center for mm-hmm. me than that. Yeah, absolutely. And that was one thing I was going to ask you about was the uh, I heard the rumor that you guys were doing kayaks down here, and I'm somebody that loves being on the water. So yep. how did those how did renting kayaks from a bar how did that kind of come come well, about? Well, we we partner with Quarry Springs okay. Outfitters. And they're great, great partner, and uh, they just uh, it's it's 
pretty awesome because you know you can uh depending on what the the need is that day you can just show up um rent a kayak you can they have a couple of different places along the river that you can drop in at and you don't need anything they'll supply you with everything you need the kayak the life jacket and uh and a ride up the river if you need one you can park here and they dump you in the river at sycamore access or or at uh, uh right by the old target there you can get into the river there depending on how long a float you want and uh we've been working you know we've worked well with like the des moines power boating club and just it, communicating between the two groups to say you know hey there's going to be kayaks on the river now also mm-hmm. and let's uh you know uh let's coexist hmm. and it's you know i can't think of anything better than sitting outside on a summer day on a kayak mm-hmm. beer in hand just kind of relaxing or even just coming up kayaking up here watching a band kayaking back whatever you want to do yeah. that's fantastic and i love to hear that you're supporting not just the bicycling community but also the river community as absolutely. well absolutely always comes back to that supporting your community yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah so as we kind of wrap up we're getting towards the end of our episode tell me what are some things we can be on the lookout for for this summer with captain roy's well we've got a great uh live music lineup uh we'll do a uh we'll have a nice concert series um which is you know that's every friday and saturday um we've got uh an event coming up on june 17th it's called (laughs) flochella and uh we're gonna have a band play to the river and people will tie off tie off out in the river and and uh it's just another idea we came up with with our friend from back pocket uh tom peterson awesome who is also doing the uh we've got the river run um which is a, a running group essentially you can enjoy the trail however you wish but there's a running group that goes in between here and el bait shop every wednesday night um uh even days begin here odd days begin at el bait shop and it's essentially a 5k and then when you get done you drink beer there we go yeah <laughs> just to, just to name a few things i love it yeah. are you guys doing anything special for rag because it's the 50th anniversary yep. this we're year we're having a rave here sweet <laughs> awesome be <laughs> on the lookout for yeah, that yep yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're uh partnering with exile brewery on that and uh after after the uh hey man <laughs> after the, after the sun goes down we're gonna get the glow sticks out and have some djs and and uh and goof around awesome yeah it's gonna be crazy in des moines for that week i know i know for sure for those that don't know registers annual great bike ride across iowa it's their 50th anniversary thousands yeah it's it's gonna be huge but awesome well wade i really appreciate you taking the time to be an outsider with us this is a fantastic interview and thanks for your consideration absolutely i love supporting local places especially local music venues so We'll be on the lookout. Um, I'm assuming Captain Roy's is on all social media. Absolutely. Sweet. Yep. Awesome. Wade, thank you very much for uh, being an outsider with us. I greatly appreciate it. Awesome. And, folks, just one more thing. You know, make sure to keep in touch with uh, Captain Roy's on all social media, like I was saying. Come down and visit here on Sailor Road. Thank you for being an outsider with us. Touch now.